The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 57 of your distance learning session for Geology Upper Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During our Lesson 56, we had some assignment. And the assignment required that we should observe this map and then answer the following questions. So using map 12 above, deduce from geologic symbols, the rock types P, Q, R, S, T, and U. This is our map. We have the rock type P, Q, R, S, T and U. So from that observation, you should be able to, you know, interpret using conventional geological symbols for geological maps. So that way, so using uh, map, uh, map 12, we're supposed to deduce the geological symbols for P. So P will stand for conglomerate. This is P, that is our conglomerate. And then Q will most likely be for shale. Then R is for mal. Then S will be for our sans uh, limestone. Then T for sandstones. And then U for uh, shale. So P for conglomerate. Q for mudstones. R for mal. Then S for limestone. T for sandstones and then U for shield. That is how easy it is to work with conventional symbols on geological maps. Now, we will still continue with map work under the sub section interpretation of geologic features on maps. We had seen types of maps, categories of geological maps, characteristics of geologic maps, the direction and orientation on maps, scales on maps. Last class, we saw conventional geologic symbols on maps. Today, we will begin the journey of looking at geological properties of maps or strata. So, our lesson. 57 is titled Geological Properties of Strata 1. There are other uh, portions to be treated. We'll begin our part 1. We're looking at the topographic properties of strata. So for this lesson, we'll look at the objectives, we we'll see the prerequisites, real life situation, and we will carry on some lesson activities which will guide our, our preparation of this lesson then we shall have some exercises to test our level of appropriation of the lesson and we shall end with an assignment. Now, a lesson on geometrical properties of strata 1 will end with us being able to deduce topographic properties on maps, being able to calculate the gradient of features on maps, it will also assist us to be able to deduce and illustrate as well as interpret our crop patterns of rock formations on maps. 
Those are the guiding elements for our lesson today. Now, we need information on denudational geology. That is, those processes that involve the wearing away of materials on the earth crust. We we'll also require information on petrology. That is, the different rock types, including their structures, mineralogy, texture, origin, nature, rock occurrences, and their relationship with each other. Now, we will require information on structural geology as well as historical geology, which has to do with map work, and which has to do with paleontology and stratigraphy. This way, we will be able to have uh, appropriate information that can help us to understand the lesson on geometrical properties of strata 1. Now, take a look at photo A, which is a beach. Photo B, which is a fracture. Photo C, which is stratification. And then photo D, which is an unconformity. Now, a geologist collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. Now, at each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential feature. Now, that is represented by photos A, B, C, and D, as we saw above. Now, which means or method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and structures of the different localities. Is it possible to represent this information or to present this information in histograms and cumulative frequency curves or present it in stelograms or in geological maps? As we go through our lesson, we will see which of these hypotheses will be able to help us relate the information from rocks and the structures. Now, that guides us into our lesson on topographic properties. Remember that in our lesson on geological or geometrical properties of strata 1, we will focus at looking at geometric properties. Now, you observe this map. That is map 14. And you deduce striking features. Realize that there is point A, point B, and point C. Also, you have contours with contour values. Then you have the direction of the north. Those are important elements. You also have the line of section from A to A prime. Then you have the scale of the map. Now, the striking aspects illustrated by that map involves contour lines with values ranging from 100 to 300 meters. And this indicates elevation. Now, each contour increases to the next by a difference of 50 meters. So you can have contour 100, contour 150, contour one, uh, 200, 250, and then 300. Note should be taken that the vertical changes in elevation to the horizontal are shown by points A, B, and C. And that the height of hills are also indicated by points A, B, and C. Therefore, contour lines, vertical changes in elevation to the horizontal and hill height will suggest a topographic or will suggest the topographic properties. The reason for which our lesson is on topographic properties. Now, the topographic properties. Contour. A contour is a line that bounds, uh, or that bounds, and then it gives form. It is a line that bounds, that gives a boundary, so that defines a boundary, and it gives the form. Then, what about the contour line? The contour line, therefore, is an imaginary line connecting areas of equal elevation above sea level. If there is a contour 
and there is a contour line. Then there is also a contour interval. The contour interval, therefore, is the change in height from one contour line to the next. So it is the difference of one contour and the other. We have three main elements of contours. The first one are contour values. These contour values, they purposely show height of land. Then we have contour spacing. Remember that there is contour interval. If there is contour interval, then there is a space between one contour and the other. And this spacing indicates the nature of slope. Now, the case where they are closely spaced indicates a gentle slope. Then the case where they are widely spaced indicates a steep slope. No, there we interchange the information. Where they are closely spaced, rather, they indicate steep slopes. And where they are sparsely or widely spaced, they indicate a gentle slope or a plane. Then the shape of the contours now shows the form of land. That is why we say a contour will give uh, elevation as well as the form. Now, other relief elements on maps that are related to topographic properties will involve spot height. The spot height, therefore, is a mark that indicates the height of a hill. For example, on the map, you can see 400 with a uh, with a point. Remember that our lesson is on geometrical properties. Properties of strata. We are doing one. And uh, we are saying that for spot height, you will have, for example, 400. Why you know that it is a spot height is because there is a point. Either before or before or after. Very important. Then we have benchmark. Benchmark here is the permanent mark of non elevation used as basis to measure elevation of other topographical points. For example, you have BM 600 and 560. DM 560 will tell you that it is a benchmark. And the benchmarks also, they also are uh, related to cases where there is extraction of materials. For example, you are extracting on a hill. You start at a certain point to extract down to a certain level, then you create a bench, just like the normal bench on which we sit. That way, you, when you are establishing the map of that area, you have to indicate the, the bench marks as the different uh, uh, levels of extraction are indicated or have been revealed in the area. Now, this is an illustrative map. You see this point, it is uh, other elevation marking. And then you see a benchmark. And a benchmark, it is a star with a dot. And that indicates uh, BM 185.8. So that is the benchmark. And then you have elevation level of the area. And you have then contours. Those are informations that helps to define the topographical properties of an area, especially when represented on maps. We have trigonometric uh, uh, stations. The trigonometric uh, uh, stations are points used in triangulation as basis for marking maps or for making maps. For example, you can have in brackets 5,636. When you find that on a map, it is a trigonometric station. Remember that there are points used in triangulation. Then you have datum, which is sea level. That is the base of the hill where elevation measurement begins. If you are in the classroom, your data, your datum is the floor because it's from the floor that you can stand and make judgment. 
If you are moving on the highway, then the road, the floor of the road is your datum point. The since we are talking about topographic uh, 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 properties, we are now saying that the base of a hill, because topography will re represent what? Relief, which are hills. Then gradient. The gradient is the ratio of vertical change in elevation to the horizontal change in distance. Remember that there are two elements here, vertical change in elevation and the horizontal. It means that if you were covering a horizontal distance up to a certain level, you would have attained a particular height. So that way, it is gradient. And gradient is very essential, especially with engineering works. When it is not well established, a, bit, a building will be on a serious danger. Now, gradient is, or gradient G, is thus expressed as the ratio of vertical interval, that is VI, and horizontal equivalence, HE, which is expressed as is expressed as G, which is our gradient, equals vertical interval and uh, all of our horizontal equivalents. We put that in box because it will be used to resolve problems that has to do with gradient. Now, let us look at an example. Take a quarry of about 9,000 meters long and vertical interval between contour lines of 300 meters. Now, calculate its gradient and deduce the engineering implications of that area. So, the first thing is that from our formula, G equals the I of our HE, that is vertical interval and horizontal equivalent. From our equation, our VI is equal to, uh, the, our VI is uh, 300 meters. Then, our horizontal equivalent is 9,000, no, no, no. We say take a quarry of about uh, 9,000 uh, 9, meters long. Yes, that is our horizontal equivalent, which is M. Now, it is the rule of the term. We simply insert and we do the substitution because the units are the same. Because gradient is a ratio, and ratios don't have units. So, our G will be equals to uh, 300 meters all over 9,000 meters. Meters will cancel meters. These two zeros will go off. So, we are left with 3. So, 3 here is 1 into 90 is uh, 30. So, we are saying that the gradient will be equal to 1 all over 30 without units. So, the interpretation is this. For every, one, for every 30 meters horizontally, it will go up to a height of 1 meter. So, the engineering implications are very, very essential then. For... Uh, 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 for this area can be good for what? Construction works because it's stable. If you can move about 30 meters and you only go to the height of what? Of, uh, of one meter. It simply means that that area can easily, you don't even need uh, a caterpillar to come level the area. You just need normal human level. Or you can even, if it is used for construction works, it is possible to uh, uh, to do a terrace and you maintain the area because they are very comfortable areas for construction works very important so the home application of this lesson each time that you see any construction work anywhere you have to master the gradient if the gradient is in such a way that the horizontal distance is too short and you attain a very uh, 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 an altitude that is too high, then that area is very dangerous. After 
constructing soon, you will start having what? Instability. The area may start collapsing. Either whether it is the root construction or uh, building works, you have to take note of how gradient is handled to reduce the degree of danger, especially with the community and on highways. Now, our crop patterns. From map 15, you are going to observe and you pick out the striking elements of the map. Now, if you observe that map, you will realize that there is a scale. There are beddings ranging from A, B, C, right up to H. Now, the striking elements, you have contour lines, and then you have cross bed boundaries. That, that is contour lines, cross bed boundaries, indicating that rock units occurring in that area have been affected by tectonic activities. Then some beds surround others, indicating that the area exposed is exposed to surface processes. Therefore, the occurrence of rock units on the surface and the effect of surface processes will suggest outcrop patterns. That is why our next subheading is on outcrop patterns. Now, an outcrop pattern reveals the total area over which a particular rock unit occurs at the surface. That is why we say it's an outcrop pattern. Remember, we saw when we we're looking at the different categories of geological maps, we saw outcrops. But now we are talking about a pattern, how the information is revealed on the surface. Now, it also gives a word, the function of the deep of the beds as well as the topography. Now, we look at horizontal beds in general. For horizontal beds, they form an outcrop pattern parallel to their contours, like it is revealed in the map. Remember that when we are doing map symbols, we did mention the fact that this cross mark with this horizontal line longer than the vertical line will indicate a horizontal area. And then again, you see contour 500 and contour 600 moving only on a common bed. We should be, supposedly from our map symbols, should be a mall or mud stone. Then contour 700 is moving also on this same bed. Then that is indication of what? Horizontal bed. Take note. Horizontal bed indicate situations where the area has not been affected by tectonic activities. That is why contours are parallel to beds or contour lines and bed boundaries are running parallel to each other. Then for vertical beds, like this case, you find they form straight lines, outcrop patterns. If you look at this, these are straight lines that looks like they are grids, but it indicates that the area is vertical. And you see the contours are crossing the bed boundaries, the vertical bed boundaries. And you see this, our symbol again, with the vertical line longer than the horizontal line. So it indicates a vertical strata. When you are interpreting a map, you have to be sensitive of these symbols. Then, dipping beds, they have direction and the amount of deep of strata showing uh, or shown by what? The deep arrows. Then the dipping beds, outcrop, uh, outcrop patterns will not be parallel to what? Contours. Why? Because it is an area that has been affected by tectonic activities. This arrow will indicate deep. So that is how the map picture or the three dimensional view is represented. Then you have sloping beds. They are uh, observed where uh, their outcrop cross uh, uh, they, uh, they, they cross a valley, like the case of this map. You see bed, uh, bed dipping downstream with deep with uh, with a deep. That is, you have a valley gradient. Look at this. This is a deep, and then the next case this is also a deep. That is a bed dipping downstream with slope. That is the valley, the, 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 this uh, uh, pointer indicates that the 
it is greater than the valley gradient. Why? In this case, it's less than the valley gradient. Then, the last case is bed dipping downstream at the same angle as the valley gradient. Look at this. These are the beds dipping, and then you see the deep direction. They are not closing in any of their directions. Recall that topographic properties are described based on contour lines and intervals and contour intervals. Based on contour values, the spacing of the, of the contours as well as the shapes of the contours. They are also interpreted or described based on spot heights and benchmarks as well as referring gradients. Now, our crop patterns are functions of what? The deep of the bed and topography and are used to describe the horizontal beds, the vertical beds, the dipping beds, as well as sloping beds. Now, looking at exercises. The first exercise, number one, a mining company in Colomines, that is at the east region of Cameroon, extract gold and leaves a pit of about two kilometers long at an altitude of 400 meters. Now calculate its gradient and deduce the engineering implications. Now to approach, you realize that the vertical interval is given and the horizontal equivalent is given. The vertical interval here is uh, two kilometers and the horizontal equivalent is 400 meters. So, that's the rule of the term again. We come to our formula. So here, G will be equals to uh, the I, all of our uh, horizontal equivalence, and that our the I is um, is 400 meters, and our horizontal equivalence is two kilometers. Remember that gradient are ratios, and when you have different units, you have to convert to most likely lower units. So this means that two kilometers will be the same as um, two times 1,000 because one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So this will be 400 meters all over 2,000 meters. So that way, these two zeros will go up and our gradient will be um, uh, one all over five. So we are saying that for every one meter uh, height, a horizontal distance of five meters will be covered. That is a very dangerous area. You just cover a distance horizontally of five meters and you are already at one meters high. It means that by the time that you reach 400 meters, it will be a cliff. And that area is dangerous. Some time ago, we saw that uh, 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 some areas, some miners will expose the area and not uh, reclaim it, and it will be danger to any child in that area. So this information should help both miners and people living in a certain community to be cautious of the dangers of mining. Identify the type of dipping of the beds A, B, C, and D below. This is bed A. Bed B, bed C, and D. So for bed A, the slope it is a sloping anticline. You see that these are dips and they are away, and this is the deep direction. So it's a sloping anticline. This is also a sloping anticline. This is also a sloping anticline, and this is a horizontal anticline. So it's sloping antiform. Uh, sloping antiform, sloping antiform, and then we have an, a, a horizontal antiform. Now, as our assignment, we will still get back to map 12, but this time our attention will be drawn to uh, topographic properties as well as the outcrop patterns of the beds from P to U. So, at home, using map 12, state the values of the lowest and the highest contour. How, number two, how do the beds are cropped? Three, calculate the contour interval. 
And four, calculate the fractional scale. Five, calculate the gradient of the beds and deduce the engineering implications of the area. That is what you will do at home. You can also use geology for advanced level, the principles of geology and the Penguin Dictionary of Geology, as well as the fundamentals of geology. This text will assist you to be able to approach this uh, exercise on map 12. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on geometrical properties of strata uh, uh, 2. It will focus on thickness and width of algebra. See you in our next lesson. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyom, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen 